guys, I hope you enjoyed that little intro that I got made for very cheap on Fiverr. Um, this is the first issue of Manga Shelf, which is basically going to be a weekly program where I talk about any new manga that I'm adding to my collection, uh, what I read, what my thoughts are, some reviews, and then I might take those reviews and make shorts of them or something like that. For now, I'm just going to keep this real simple because I've been putting off doing these manga reviews for a long time. I do manga reviews in my head, and I just talk to myself, and I may as well record it, I guess, and put it on the channel and see if anybody's going to watch it. Uh, maybe I'll do them more elaborate, and people do, like, essays on series. Maybe I'll do stuff like that later. For now, I'm just going to do it in a way that I think is fun for me. And uh, thanks to the two people who watch this, that's going to be great. Um, but yeah, just first, let's backtrack. I've been reading manga for a long time. I've been, you know, I don't know, eight, maybe. I was first introduced to manga in French, because if you don't know, well, I'm uh, half French, and um, just the French people in general are big readers. They read a lot. And also, they're big comic readers, which is, you know, bande dessinée, the French um, comics. And it's read a lot by adults, and it seems to be a little bit more respected by adults compared to, like, American comics. You know, if you're reading Bande dessinée, you're not necessarily a nerd, you know. I'm a nerd. Nothing wrong with being a nerd, but that's just what it is. And that also all yields them to reading more manga, because they read more, they read more comics, and they read more manga. And there's a lot more that gets published in French. So as I'm talking about stuff, there might be some series in French, and there might be some series in French I'm talking about that maybe you've never heard of because they've never been translated into English or something. That's cool. I'm still going to talk about them because I, um, if I was in your position, I would like someone to talk about something that I've never heard of. That's why I watch YouTube videos. And maybe you have heard of it and you haven't heard anybody else talk about it and you want someone to talk about it. Which has happened to me a few occasions. But anyways, yeah, I've been reading manga for a long time. I was first introduced in French reading Dragon Ball because my local library had every volume of Dragon Ball. And, you know, they were a five-minute walk from my house. I read Dragon Ball two, three times in a row. I love Dragon Ball. I still think Dragon Ball is the best shonen. Some people think it's something else. That's, that's fine. I still think it has the best pacing. It has the best action. And it, it really, like, redefined what a, a shonen is. And I still love Dragon Ball. I loved Dragon Ball when I was a kid. I love Dragon Ball now. And if you don't think Dragon Ball is the best shonen, you have to read it. Don't watch the anime. If you watch the anime... The anime is good. I like the Dragon Ball anime, but it's it's a, it's cute. It's fun. I don't think it's the best anime, and I don't think it's the best shonen anime. But if when you read the manga, you realize you know how great the the pacing is, and the narrative is, and like the cliffhanger is, and the basic just the characters are. I still think it's the best shonen. Nothing's topped it to me. So that leads me to the first thing I'm going to review on the manga shelf, which is. This right here, Dragon Ball Super 1 to 19, which I have finally read. I've I've watched Dragon Ball Super. I haven't read it until you know just last week, because um, I found the the volumes for used at a good price. So yeah, like I said, I think Dragon Ball is the best shonen. Volume 1 to 42, the original Dragon Ball. Uh, I don't think Dragon Ball Super is nearly as good as the original Dragon Ball. I'm not going to go that much into the issues. I think most people know the issues with it. Um, but basically, this takes place after the Buu Saga. And what's different about this versus the anime is there's basically two arcs I've seen so far. There's the Granola arc and the um, Moro arc, which they weren't in the anime. And I, I didn't know anything about them until I read it. And this takes place, it finished the Moro arc, and then I'm at the Granola arc, and it's not done yet. It's almost done, and I do know what happens after this. I do know that Black Frieza shows up and just ends the arc. Because that was spoiled on the internet. That was hard to miss. Um, and I really like this character. I don't know what his name is, but he's, he's cute, and he's like Space Krillin. So, and Krillin's one of my favorite characters, so I just, I like the look of him. Um, yeah. With that said, I don't think it's as good as the original Dragon Ball, but I'm not gonna. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I read the you know the whole stack in maybe a week. 
I don't have that much time to read, so that's that's pretty quick for me. It starts off basically where the Battle of Gods movie was, where Beerus shows up, and it fast forwards it. It goes by it pretty quick. Beerus beats everybody. He becomes Super Saiyan God. Whatever, whatever. He starts training with Whis, and then they don't show the Frieza resurrection of F arc, which I like better. I don't like that they're repeating the movies. Because I don't think there's any point. Everyone's seen the movies. You don't need to redo the movies. And then they go to the Universe 7 arc, which is basically... So, in Super, you find out that there's other universes, and then you also find out that... I guess one of the universes is, you know, they're kind of friends with the other guy, and they do a, a friendly-ish battle. And then you meet more characters, and then there's another big tournament. It's Dragon Ball, so there's going to be 50 tournaments. And then you meet Jiren, who's basically... Saitama, like... I don't know if there's ever been a character like that in Dragon Ball where he, he's the strongest character and he, everyone says, oh, this guy's the strongest character, but he isn't very evil. Um, he's not evil. He's just kind of misguided a bit. And also they're, all their universes are on the line. So, And then you get to the Moro arc and Moro is essentially just Dragon Ball Z Galactus because he eats planets and gets stronger eating planets. That's fine. They did Broly, which basically just Dragon Ball Z Hulk, so now they got Dragon Ball and Galactus. And then Goku masters his new technique, which is Ultra Instinct. Ultra Instinct is fine. It's it's a thing that happens. And then he beats him. Vegeta's useless still. And then there's the Granola arc, which is a bit silly. I'm just going to talk about the two arcs that were in the manga, that were only in the manga, which is the Moro arc and the Granola arc. The Moro arc was interesting to me. Um, they did some cool things. Like, you got to see the old Supreme Kai. You got a bit more knowledge on Boo. They set up Oob now having god powers whenever he's introduced in a way that kind of makes sense. Because he's got to be able to compete with Goku, who's just ridiculously strong now. I'm not a huge fan of Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan Blue. Because... It doesn't make any sense. I mean, they're all they have to do to awaken it is hold hands. With, what is it, six pure-hearted Saiyans? I feel like they've done that in the past without trying to become Super Saiyan God, just to exchange each other's power or something, and nobody became Super Saiyan God, but apparently this time it, it works, and it gives you a huge power jump for no reason. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And then... But it's fine, and then they quickly introduce Super Saiyan Blue, which I think is cooler, just visually it looks cooler, and it's basically just you're stacking Super Saiyan on Super Saiyan God. It's fine, it doesn't really do anything. Like, I don't, my issue with these new Super Transformations is that they don't, you know, you could easily have the same story and have him go Super Saiyan. It doesn't make much of a difference, and it makes the power scaling really wonky, because sometimes he'll be normal Super Saiyan fighting the same person, and then he'll go, oh, this guy's pretty strong, and he'll jump to, like, Super Saiyan Blue. But Super Saiyan Blue is, like, way stronger. If you've read the entirety of Dragon Ball Super, like, Super Saiyan 2 is way, way stronger than Super Saiyan 1. And he'll go right to Blue, and you're like, okay, well, that doesn't make any sense that this guy was... You were fighting this guy who was apparently strong at Super Saiyan, and now you need Blue, because... It just doesn't make a lot of sense, and it's a little unnecessary, like, it... You know, I get it. Really, is just the cell action figures, and then they came out with the ultra. So in this, there's ultra ego, and ultra or soup, ultra instinct. And ultra instinct was it was in the anime. It was in the tournament of power. Ultra ego looks cool. Vegeta's got purple hair. I really like that they don't have the same transformations, because that was getting a bit old. And I like that their techniques aren't Saiyan exclusive. They're they're using other techniques that are like deities would use i mean you know ultra ego would be like the i'm assuming beerus uses it it's purple you know they're kind of foreshadowing that or something and then obviously ultra instinct is the angel technique like said that angels are permanently in the ultra instinct state it's fine ultra instincts it doesn't make a lot of sense because i feel like he's already been fighting getting rid of his mind like since he was a little kid i mean i, I feel like that's one of the main things you learn in martial arts and I don't know why now it's suddenly so important. Like, you're fighting without your brain, but they were already fighting at, like, the speed of light. So how is that going to make you go that much faster? Anyways, I'm rambling. And then Ultra Ego, 
basically Vegeta has to get punched a bunch of times and then he gets stronger. But if you punch him too many times, he'll still lose. So that I don't understand it. But they just I from my thing, they just introduced that. So maybe that will make more sense later. I just they keep introducing transformations, but without much narrative. And then Granola, that was probably my least favorite arc so far. Just because I don't mind that there's Dragon Balls and Namekians on another planet. So essentially the Granola arc is you meet this guy who's a bounty hunter, Granola, and he hates Frieza and he hates Sans because Sans showed up under Frieza's directive and destroyed his whole species. And so he grew up, he survived, he grew up, he became a bounty hunter and and then he used the Dragon Balls. So his Dragon Balls of his planet, which there's only two Dragon Balls on his planet. That's all you need. You don't need seven or nine or whatever. You just need two. And they don't have a have like a, a yearly limit where you can only use use them once a year and then they scatter. They scatter, but then you can just pick them up again and, and do it again. It's, it's a little weird. Um, but I don't mind that they have their own Dragon Balls because it, it was stated many times in the series that Namekians probably travels pretty far. And that there probably are other colonies of Namekians out there. You know, Earth's not that special, right? And then... He uses this dragon to make himself the strongest person in the universe. Which makes no sense because the dragon shouldn't be able to wish, make a wish that is beyond him. And he, he says, well, I'm going to take your life force. But that doesn't make any sense because that means anybody at any time could have just wished that they were the strongest in the universe. I mean, they're so beyond, you know, Namek level Frieza wanted to make them immortal. They're, they're literally deities now. I mean... The people that they were... Goku has straight up mastered the technique that angels use that everybody, including the gods of destruction and the tournament of power, were freaking out about that he could do it. And then all it takes is a wish from a... It, right, like, the, the dragon only needs two Dragon Balls. So this dragon, this whatever Shenron equivalent, shouldn't be that strong. He shouldn't be stronger than our Shenron, just Earth's Shenron. And Earth's Shenron couldn't do this. I don't think the Namekian Dragon Balls, which are more powerful than Earth's Shenron can make someone stronger that like just as strong as a, as they are now. Anyway, so Granola makes himself stronger. Granola is then stronger than Goku Ultra Instinct? Somehow? It doesn't make sense. And then he fights them and he wins, basically. Um, Vegeta goes Ultra Ego. He still loses, you know, even though his thing is that he should get stronger when he gets punched in the face, but he still loses. And then there's this band called the Heaters, which they show up, and there's this guy. I can't even remember his name. Basically, he fought Bardock, and Bardock's Goku's dad. So he fought, Go he, he fought Goku's dad, and then that's kind of when Bardock started to have a change of heart, whatever. There's some stuff that goes on. That part's fine, but then this guy w wishes that he's going to be the strongest. So now he's the strongest, because apparently anybody at any time could wish that they're going to be the strongest in the universe. Okay. Why, like, why didn't they just do that for the Tournament of Power? Just say, hey, I wish I was the strongest in the universe. They were, like, stronger than anybody else. Like, why didn't they do that at any time? But it doesn't matter. They're doing that now, and apparently it works. And so now they're fighting this guy, and that's kind of it. They don't know where it is. Like, they don't know how to beat him. I know from spoilers that Black Freezer shows up and just is now the strongest. Like, he destroys everybody. I guess. And I'm assuming Black Freezer was training in, like, another dimension. That's why he didn't count in the wish. So he, like, bypassed the wish that I wish I was the strongest. So then when they wished that they were the strongest, it didn't count Freezer because he was elsewhere. And then he showed up and is just, like, really strong because... You could train and become strong. I don't understand. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I've been crapping on it a lot, but I don't think the Granola arc is, is pretty strong. I thought the Moro arc was fine. I thought that was interesting. They introduced like a rogue angel in uh, Miris, um, who was working for the Gal Galactic Patrol. And the idea that Moro kind of gets stronger by devouring planets in the same way that Galactus does. I feel like th that's fine. Um... There are really strong, like I said, Goku, Vegeta, everybody. You gotta eat a lot of planets to be as strong as them. But they're they're gonna have a lot of power scaling issues. They've been having power scaling issues for a while because they're just so strong that it, how do you introduce something that tops them? And how do you introduce something that 
it still makes sense and it's still a threat to them. So, anyways, that's it. Um, yeah, like like I said, Dragon Ball is still I think the best shonen. It's my it's not my favorite manga, but it's my favorite action shonen. And I don't think Dragon Ball Super is as good, but if you're a Dragon Ball fan, I would still recommend that you read the manga because I still found it enjoyable. I'm not gonna lie, even though it's silly, but it's Dragon Ball, and I'm I like Dragon Ball. I'll, I'll read anything Dragon Ball. But yeah, that's it for me. Um, I rambled a lot. I'm gonna cut a lot of the stuff out of the video, and I might not even release this video. But this is the first manga shelf video that I'm doing. Thank you to the two people that are going to watch this. I appreciate it. Um, my ultimate goal with this series of videos is just to talk about the things that I talk about in my head and put them out. And maybe I'll find other people that, you know, online that I could talk to about it. Because I don't have that many people I could talk to about in my uh, private life about this stuff. Um, and if the channel grows... Maybe I'll get sponsored, and then I'll get free manga, because manga is so expensive. So that's, that'd be cool. But yeah, anyways, I'll catch you guys later. I'm um, Thanks for watching this first edition of the manga shelf. And uh, yeah, check out Dragon Ball Super, the manga, if you are a fan of Dragon Ball. Thanks, guys.